Hi all. In our last lecture, we talked about our reference data model and we also went through a few scenarios of how the data will fit in into that model. One quick thing I also wanted to highlight about this data model is if we come to category system relationship values table again, the values that we are holding here, which are specific to a system, let's say CRM or ERP, are just the database values and not the values that the systems will display uh, on screens to the end user. And what I mean by that is, so let's again go back to our favorite gender example for CRM. Now we are saying that CRM is holding 01 for male and 02 for female. Now this would be the database or the internal values that CRM will be holding in its database. Now this doesn't mean that the end user who will be filling in a form from CRM application would be seeing this. They might be able to see male or female or M or F itself in the drop down. So we are not concerned about the descriptive values or the screen values for any system be it CRM or ERP, we are just holding the database values. And this is needed for integration to work properly between different systems. You don't need to store the screen values in your RDM as per this point, because we still have got our enterprise uh, canonical or enterprise values um, held in reference master. So that being said, what we'll do is we'll now go to Simaki to create all these entities and the relationships between these entities. So if I go to login, I'll just log into Simaki. And now I'll go to application builder. So as it's a new model, I'll just click on new model and give it a name of RDM. Now, it's up to us if you want to put a decent description, which is always recommended. I'll click on finish. Now here in entities, we'll create all our entities. So right click, add entity. And now we'll fill in the key details. So if we go here, our first entity is category. So we'll give it a name of category. We'll go to next. We want an internal system ID for this and we'll click finish. Now we'll add in few attributes. So we'll add category name. Now this would be a string, finish. Now I need a complex type to hold start and end dates. So let's say effective dates, finish, and we'll create start and end date here as a complex type. Started with date data type finish. We'll do the same for end date as well. Save this and in category now, what I'll do is I'll add complex attribute of effective dates. Why I have done this? Because now I can reuse effective dates across different entities rather than creating specific attributes again and again. So I'll save this. Now we have got our category entity created. We can see it here. Next, we'll create system. It says system is a reserved keyword. So what we'll do is we'll just add, I will just add another S at the, at the end, calling it systems and we'll stick with the, the default settings and click finish. So now if you go to attributes, 
we'll add system name so of string data type and then complex attribute of effective dates finish we'll save this now we'll create a third or intersection table of cat sys rel so let's say cat sys rel next we want internal ids and then finish now if we go to attributes just validate we have got cat sys id category id system id start and end date so what we'll do is we'll go here and just add effective dates because the other two are uh, foreign keys from category and systems so what we'll do is we'll select effective dates and then click finish we will save this and now what we'll do is we'll create a diagram and we will call it as RDM to have the pictorial image of our data model now we have got this blank canvas what we'll do is we'll say add existing entity click here select all and OK so just spread this out Now we always have to go from child to parent to establish the relationships. So what we'll do is we'll click on add reference and then from child to parent, we'll just, for some reason it's not working on my machine. I'm just trying again and again. Let's give it another try. So I'll click on add reference and then go from child to parent. Now this will ask me which is my referencing entity, which is my referenced entity. Go with default. So now we can see that we have got category as a foreign key from category table. Now we'll click on add reference again and then get the systems reference. Now we have got what we were looking for as per our data model. Now what we'll do is we'll save this. And now we'll add another entity, which would be reference master. Reference master, go next and We'll go with default setting. Now, if I double click on this, it's just asking me to say what changes I have made so far. I'll say yes, okay. And now I'll add the other attributes. So what all our attributes do we have here? We have got reference ID. Uh, sorry, we have got a foreign key from category, which we'll add later. We've got canonical ID, canonical value and dates. So, I'll add simple attribute of canonical ID. This would be string finish and then canonical value finish and then I'll add start and end date. Effective dates. I'll save this I'll go back to RDM and now I can see that I have got all of the attributes here in this diagram so what I'll do is I'll select reference master add reference as this is a child and then move to category I'll select the default option and now I have got the category ID 
as a foreign key in reference master now also cats is rel so uh, I have to create one more entity uh, which would be cats is rel values so what I'll do I'll add another entity here cat sys rel values next we'll stick with id generation internal id generation and then finish now we'll add other attributes here before that let's add the foreign keys um, in this table so we know that it will have a foreign key from cat sys rel so what we'll do is select the entity add reference and then get the catsys rel id and we also know that we have got reference master id here as well so we'll click on add reference and then move from child to parent so now we have got reference master as well now we'll add the remaining attributes after saving the changes we'll go to attributes and then going back to excel we have got ref id catches id we will have value parent and dates so value parent and then dates click finish save and now if we go back to our RDM now we can see that we have got a data model there's one thing it's a self-referencing link as well here so what we'll do is we'll add reference we'll start from here and then drop it back to the same entity now we can see that we have got cats is rel values as referencing entity and the reference entity is also cats is rel values so what we'll do is we will click finish and then this basically adds a self-referencing relationship to this entity now our data model is ready in semaki uh, i'll see you in next lecture thank you